Today I'm going to be making a very easy vanilla cake. And here are the ingredients that we need. Three cups of all-purpose flour, two cups of granulated sugar, one cup of vegetable oil, one cup of milk, four eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, four teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do, get all of my granulated sugar into our bowl, and then all of our oil, and you can replace the oil with butter if you wish. So you'll use the same amount of butter, one cup of butter. So I'll grab my mixer and away we go. I just want to get all of this combined nicely. And if you are using butter, you're going to want to get all of this really well creamed. Once that's mixed, I'll get my first egg in. And that's going to really start lightening up the mixture and getting everything together. I'll get my second egg in. You can already see that the mixture is starting to cream up. And you want to allow enough mixing in between your eggs. So don't dump all of your eggs in at one shot. You want to do one egg at a time. Our third egg. And you can see now how nice and rich this is becoming. And then our fourth egg. So I increased my mixer speed and I just want to get a little bit of air into this. I want to get this really, really nice and fluffy. I can add in my vanilla now. You can see my mixture is really fluffy now. I'm going to add in my salt. And that's perfect. And then we're going to start sifting in our dry ingredients. And I'm going to sift in my flour. So I'll put about half of that flour in. Give it a little bit of a shake. All of my baking powder. And get that in there. Okay, perfect. We'll start mixing this in. And then I'm just going to add in about half of my milk. And the reason that I'm not adding in all of that flour is that I don't want to have a lot of lumps. And by adding in half the flour, I won't get as many lumps. Just makes the process a little easier for our mixer. Once that's combined, we can add in the remaining flour. And it's always a good idea to sift it. Perfect. And we'll mix this in. This is a really, really easy recipe, but it produces a really nice cake. And then I'll add in the rest of the milk. And that's it for the ingredients. I do have my oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just want to mix this until combined and then we're going to pour it into our little pan. Okay, that's good. And now we are ready to fill our pan. So we are ready to go. I've got a beautiful little mold here. This is a little specialty mold and what's cool about it is that each slice is going to look like a tiny heart. This is a silicone mold 
and it is about nine inches in diameter and about two and a half inches tall. So I have lightly sprayed this with some cooking spray, which is just a grease, just a regular grease. This is a vegetable spray. I'm gonna grab my batter and just get my batter right in there. And whenever you're cleaning out your bowl, make sure that you use a spatula because you will get all of that beautiful batter right out of your bowl. That's perfect, just like that. And then to avoid any spills, I'll get this onto a pizza tray. And this is ready to go into my oven. 350 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna bake this about 45 minutes. I'll tell you exactly how long I baked it when I get back. Oh, here we go. Oh, that smells amazing. My cake was in the oven for a total of 45 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's extremely hot right now, so I'm gonna let this cool, and then we're gonna unmold it from this cool little heart-shaped mold. This is a silicone mold, really nice. So I'm gonna let it cool down, and then I'll come back. This is about 15 minutes later now. My cake has cooled enough to remove it from the mold. And just before I do, I'll show you how nicely this is just coming apart from the actual silicone mold. So this is ready to go. I do wanna get it out of this mold because this mold does not breathe and I don't want to have condensation starting on the bottom of our cake. I'm going to flip this over and then we'll remove our mold. Look at that, how easily that comes right off. And then flip it back. One more time, one more flip. And now at this point, I'm gonna let this completely cool. So this is a couple of hours later now. My cake has completely cooled. And at this point, I could frost the cake like this, but I'd like to have a really nice flat surface. So I'm gonna be using a knife with a serrated edge, and I'm just gonna cut the top off. really nice. This little section here, you could just break this up, mix it up with some frosting and turn it into cake pops, or you could just break it into little pieces and nibble away at it. So I'm going to grab my knife about halfway down, and I'm going to cut through it again because I'm going to be putting a little bit of buttercream frosting between these two layers. Perfect. So we've got our two layers now. So I'm gonna set up for our next step and I'll be back in a second. So now I'm gonna frost the inside of my cake with some beautiful whipped cream frosting. This is a buttercream with whipped cream in it as well. And I'll put a link to that underneath this video. If you wish to see how I made this. Okay, that's pretty good. If you wish, you can take a little spatula and just make it a little bit more level. There's no need, but if you wish. And this is a really, really nice buttercream because you've got that nice whipped cream in there as well, which is a heavy cream, 35% cream. That's nice. And then our second layer and really try to line that up well with the bottom layer. And that looks good. And for my final step, I'm gonna pour a beautiful chocolate ganache right over the whole cake. For our last step, I have some nice chocolate ganache. I have a tray lined with some parchment paper and our cake ready to go. So I'm gonna start getting this on. 
and just slowly go around the cake. And you don't have to get all the edges if you don't want to. So this ganache, I do have recipes for this on my channel. Equal parts of heavy cream, which is whipping cream, to chocolate. I'll grab a spatula and just level this out. And as I level it, it pushes over the sides as well. So I'm going to grab a little bit more and just start covering up some more of these edges. So anything that drips down underneath the cake, you can just let that solidify and then you can use this again. So at this point, we'll just give it a little spin to show you. And now we've got to let this set up before we actually cut into it. So I'm going to let this really chill down. I'm going to pop this into the fridge, probably about a half an hour. And then we'll cut into a little piece and I'll show you what it looks like inside. So this is about a half an hour later. My cake has chilled down quite a bit and now we're going to cut into it. Now to keep that heart shape, you have to make sure that you cut from here to here and not just a little piece like this. You want to have the full shape of the heart. And then I'll just wash off my blade and then dry your knife off and then we're ready for our next cut. And now you can really see that heart coming to life. I'm going to get my knife right underneath and then just give it a little wiggle to make sure I got a good break. Here we go. And there here. And I'm just going to push this off with a fork. And there we have it. Our beautiful little heart cake. Check that out. Oh, that looks amazing. Really, really cute. Let me zoom in. So I've zoomed in just to show you this a little bit better. Look at how cute that is. So we've got our beautiful chocolate ganache all the way around and on top and our whipped cream frosting right in the middle and that's a buttercream frosting. Really, really nice. And if I tilt this up you can actually see that heart. I'll just put my fork here so it doesn't fall. Where are we? Here we are. And there you can really see that little heart. Isn't that cute? And for our last shot, I just wanted to show you what the inside of the actual cake looked like with the little slice taken out. So a really fun one today. I know you're probably not going to have that heart-shaped mold, but try out this recipe anyway. The cake itself, really amazing, and so is that frosting. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you wish. I do really appreciate that. That's it, and I'll see you next time. Oh, that looks good.